Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors, and today we're going to take a look at something new we've come up with here at Fat Dragon Games. These are 3D printable airbrush stencils. And I don't know about you, but the thing I hate most when it comes to painting tabletop terrain is wood beam and stucco buildings for villages. Um, the brush, painting them by hand with a brush just takes forever. Uh, it can be very frustrating to do. So when we did our Dragonshire Kickstarter uh, last year, I wanted to find, I just didn't have the time to paint a complete village for the Kickstarter for the photos. And I you know, wanted to find a much easier way of doing it than having a bunch of people sit down, you know, bang them out by hand with a brush. So I hit on the idea of creating a 3D printable airbrush stencil, and that's what you're looking at here. This just prints with standard PLA. It's very thin, so it's flexible. And um, you're going to hand paint the first part of the build or the wall, and then airbrush the lighter stucco in. So we'll get started here. The only thing you're going to need, uh, aside from standard, you know, your standard paints and everything, is these uh, makeup sponges. I buy these on Amazon. I'll link them in the video description. Um, but these are really, really handy for painting uh, things like this. It goes very, very fast, and they do a great job. So getting started, I've just primered my wall model with a flat gray. It um, doesn't really matter what you use. I'm going to go in and base coat it then with a burnt umber. And it doesn't have to be burnt umber. Any dark brown is fine. Uh, you can airbrush this. You can hand paint it. I've just hand painted mine here. Once that base coat is dry, you're going to take your makeup sponge and I'm using any medium brown will do. I'm using Apple Barrel uh, Territorial Beige. And you're just going to want to lightly stroke this in over the wood beam section. So I'm putting a little bit on my sponge. I'm going to dab off the excess. And you just start stroking it in very lightly. Um, you don't want to get it in the recesses of the wood so that detail still looks great. And if you get a little too much in, you can always flip the sponge over to the clean side and uh, scrape some of that paint off. But just go very lightly. Uh, it goes very, very fast. And once this is dry, then you're ready to start airbrushing. Now, a lot of people ask me what I recommend as far as an airbrush when it comes to painting terrain. Um, I started out uh, my career as a book illustrator. I worked for a publishing house down in Texas, and I was a staff illustrator, and we used airbrushes back then to do all of our book illustrations. So I've used everything um, from Iwata to Thayer and Chandler, Pache, Badger, and a host of others. And of all the airbrushes I've owned over the years, I've really liked my Badgers the best. Um, they are built incredibly tough. They're built like a tank. Badger is based here in the USA. Um, they are extremely good when it comes to customer service. If you have a problem with their brush, contact them. They will resolve it immediately. They have been absolutely fantastic with me anytime I've you know, ever had any issues needed to contact them on. Um, I use three brushes for all of my hobby work, and the one at the top, the Patriot, the Badger Patriot 105, is the one I use for all of my terrain work. My other two, my Sotar 2020 and my Extreme Patriot Arrow, uh, those are only used uh, when I need to paint or airbrush on miniatures. Um, these really aren't at, uh, good brushes for terrain. Uh, but that Patriot at the top is fantastic. You can uh, swap the head and needle out on it uh, in just you know less than a minute. Uh, they have a medium, a fine, and an extra fine head combo for it. And that pretty much covers anything you need to do when it comes to painting terrain. And it's absolutely fantastic. Um, they're very easy to maintain and clean and keep running. So um, I'll link those in the uh, video description too. Uh, moving along, uh, here I've got a number of walls I've gone ahead and done a little hand painting on. They're dry, they're ready to go. I've got a couple of uh, printed airbrush stencils. And as far as the paint for the stucco, any light colored cream or linen or parchment is going to look great. Uh, this stuff varied wildly in color as it aged. Uh, it would get darker, dingier. It could even have a green tinge from um, mold and uh, mildew and um, just, you know, just general weathering. So don't get hung up on the color I'm using here. Anything light that's going to contrast well with the wood will look fine. So I've mixed this up fairly, th not thick, but it's not as thin as I normally would with airbrushing, simply because um, 
I'm not trying to do any fine detail freehand work here. I'm just blasting through a stencil and I wanted to get it uh, covered in a single coat. Um, so I'm just going to hold the stencil by hand against the uh, wall model. Um, I'm just, uh, I've got recesses on this that you can use rubber bands with. I've never had to use them. Just holding them like this works fine. Uh, I'm working at a relatively low air pressure and just generally hitting through the stencil. And as you can see, it goes really fast. You can do each of these wall sections in a matter of seconds and uh, which is infinitely faster than trying to do something like this by hand and it's much cleaner. So what you do is you just have a batch of walls like this, go through, do one side at a time, set the model aside to dry. And once you get through with all of the walls, then the first one you did is going to be dry enough that you can pick it up and do the opposite side. So if you do this assembly line fashion, it's going to go really, really fast for you. Uh, once the fronts and backs are done, then we have a separate stencil that fits on the sides. You can get the ends on these. And again, it just takes a couple of seconds blasting through with the airbrush and you're done. And as you can see here, um, the, these all the buildings in this photo were done with the airbrush stencils. Uh, the stencils work great. They do a very clean, neat job, and it goes so much faster than trying to paint it with a brush. So let me know two things in the comments. One, uh, would you like to see more airbrush stencils from us for future sets? And two, would you like me to do an, uh, maybe a video or two explaining the ins and outs of airbrushing terrain? You know, what equipment you need, how to get started, how to use it. Um, that type of thing. If that would be useful to you, all of you, let me know. If enough people would like it, I'll be happy to do a couple videos on it. Um, that's going to wrap it up for today. Please click that like and subscribe button. Thank you very much.